Hi, I'm Michael Feldstein from eLiterate, and I want to talk to you today about how we can rebuild and revitalize education together. And don't worry, this isn't a pitch for a new religion or a self-actualization course or an edtech product that can semi-read your mind. I'm talking about hard work, employing realistic strategies together over time. I'm talking about organizing a movement, and I call this movement the Resilience Network. In recent days, we've experienced a series of crises that have exposed how fragile and flawed our institutions are, how fragile and flawed our way of life is, really. Somehow, we have to find a way to respond to this rolling series of existential crises we're going through and still find the energy and the focus and the capacity for collective action that will enable us to reimagine our education system and to rebuild it stronger. It's overwhelming. Uh, but as the saying goes, uh, there's no way out but through. I don't exactly know what the right answer looks like, but I do know what the wrong one looks like. It looks like what we're doing now. Half of us are out there killing ourselves, sometimes literally, to try to keep the ship from sinking. And the other half of us are climbing the walls with frustration and writing passionate tweets because we don't know what else we can do. People are frantically throwing links to stuff they're producing into a Google Sheet in the hopes that somebody else who needs it might find it. This won't work. We're treading water at best. We need to coordinate better, organize our bucket brigades, learn from these crises while we're going through them, and make sure we don't lose the lessons that we're learning. This isn't going to be easy or pretty. But like just about everything else that matters, it starts with a conversation. This video is meant to be a discussion prompt for your group. You may have noticed that I'm not naming that group. That's because I want this to be a prompt for many different groups. We should all be asking ourselves the same questions about how we can help and what we can do differently. And if we're doing it right, we'll come up with a variety of different answers. Particularly in the early days, the Resilience Network movement will work partly like a hashtag and partly like a potluck dinner. It's partly like a hashtag in the sense that we're all working to make the resources that we're creating more discoverable, focused on a particular intention. We want to make our institutions more resilient. We share a common purpose. We're learning how to do this as we go. People are already doing a lot of sharing, but we need to get better at effective sharing. If we start labeling efforts as part of the resilience network, or hashtag resilience network, then we can lower the cost of knowledge gathering. In the digital age, sharing information is easy and cheap, and that's part of the problem. With all of the production that's happening at an astonishing rate, which is adding to the enormous amount of existing information that is kind of sort of fit for purpose and was already out on the internet. People who are in a crisis don't have the time to spend hours Googling for something useful. We have to make sure that the right resources are available at their fingertips. At this point, I'm gonna start weaving another analogy into this story. Think about what we've already learned from the medical supply chain during the COVID crisis. Patients who need ventilators can't get them because they're sitting broken in a warehouse. Doctors who have test kits can't use them because they've run out of cotton swabs. Cotton swabs. Part of what we're trying to do here is crowdsource a supply chain. And that supply chain doesn't work unless we all get the right tools and information directly to our frontline responders at their moment of need. This is emergency room stuff. There's no time to waste. So the idea of a hashtag, which I mean both literally and metaphorically, is that we're trying to organize the resources we have and get them to those emergency room personnel. We don't have the luxury of a centralized, organized supply chain. So we're using the crowdsourcing tools that we have. Now, if we can get the resources we have to the point of need, that's great. 
But what if we don't have the resources that they need? What if there aren't enough cotton swabs to go around? One of the things that a supply chain does is coordinate the production of needed resources. So we have to duplicate that function too. This brings us to the potluck analogy. When we organize a potluck dinner, we start by sharing what everybody would like to contribute, but we don't stop there. If three people are bringing desserts and nobody is bringing a salad, we talk about that. And hopefully somebody steps up and makes a salad. It's not a perfect method. If most of our friends are lousy cooks, then we might have a problem. A potluck is not the same as a catered meal. But we can do it together with the resources we have. And in our case, we happen to have a lot of cooks. Some are better than others. But we have a large and enthusiastic group of friends who want to contribute. Some of this is about making sure that we're utilizing the human resources that right now are sitting on their hands or tweeting in frustration. So this is what we have to do together. I told you this video is intended to be a discussion prompt. So here come the questions. Here are the challenges I'm asking you to discuss with your group. First, what resources can you offer that might be useful to someone during a resilience crisis like this one? I'm being deliberately vague by what I mean by a resource. It might be content, or a tool, or an offer of help, or something else. Probably something I haven't thought of. Think about what you already have and how close it is to being immediately fit for purpose. Think about what you can create and what you can offer. Second, how can you help the network to categorize those resources so that we can route them to the right people? Math instructors and English instructors need different things. Instructors need different things than instructional designers. Instructional designers and deans, different things. Think about what you can do to help us do together to organize those resources so that people can find what they need. Third, how can you help the network check the quality of resources that we're sharing? A document telling everybody to drink a shot of bleach for their health is not helpful. A lot of instructional resources are produced by people with good intentions but weaker skills. Think about how you can help the network to address this problem together in a distributed way. And finally, how can you help the network get the right resources directly to the point of need? A ventilator that has made it from the warehouse to the basement of the hospital still isn't useful until it's moved into the emergency room and in the hands of a trained practitioner. And the patient may not have time for somebody to wheel it up or for the practitioner to be trained. Think about how you can help the network to get the appropriate resources to the point of use at the moment of need. These are the questions that I want your group to discuss and brainstorm. Don't spend too much time debating definitions or weeding out bad ideas. For now, just let it rip, go crazy. We need to think big. Once you have all your ideas on the table, then you can decide as a group which are the best ones for you to act on. Because remember, the goal here is for us to act. So those are your questions. There's your assignment. I can't wait to see what you come up with.